Welcome, Sojourners. You have found yourself a cozy place here at Sojourners Awake. I'm Jonathan, and this is our production of The Fairy and the Free. And we begin in media rests, in the middle of the action up in the third level of the Wizard's Tower. Grinda, Dracenia the Vampire, Alastra, Feathermore, and the three Sojourners have all gathered together to rescue the swan. Of course, everyone has their own motivations, including the evil Grinda. And as we find out, even the green swan Frisia has a motivation of his own. How will this adventure in Skyworld end? And so for now, our story continues. Trina. Make your perception check. Let's see, what Sarah, do I so, ascertain I, before they I know come? you're so... I know. No, that was absolutely delightful. <laughs> Every step of it. Twelve. Mm. You hear a footfall on the floor. Who is it? Oh. Of course you'd be here. Well... Daddy didn't want to send one of his more incompetent soldiers, so he sends you on the day of your coming of age party. What a great way to show your prowess. At least I did not pretend to be a friend. Oh, I did not pretend at all. I am 100% sure of myself. Unlike you, you don't know anything. Well, where is the pra- where is the package? Where is the swan? Alastra, patience. Now, let's make this easy. You want to make your father happy. I want to make the Count happy. What can we do for each other? I will not make a deal. Not with you. And at that moment, you definitely know Alastra is present and the voice of Drusenya in the background. Question if I recognize that voice. You do. It is Drusenya How and Alastra. she get out of the fridge sober? She sounds very different as well. Oh. Her voice carries a thicker tone to it. You hear the footsteps. Oh, please don't push. You. I, this is a new coat. Shh. Oh, I recognize you. <laughs> hey, cutie. What's what's going on? Oh, things are looking up for Grinda today. Yeah, that was sarcasm. Shut up. What's Between an Aladrin and a Hinfolk, this is a good day for Grinda. And I'm about to make a really I said good... it's sarcasm. Shut I... up. Good gracious, what Would is you going s- on? I, I, I will knock you right back out. I tap her on the shoulder and I said, I've already talked to him. He, basically, they're going to auction the swan off. So maybe if we can gather all of our resources, we can just like buy the swan. It's, I don't know. It sounds cost. like Alastra and Dracenia are in there. And Dracenia sounds different. I don't know if she was who we thought she was. Well, nobody really is who we think they are. That's so true. they just kind of pretend. So, I mean, it's nothing really new. I mean, the goal was to get the swan. No, so I know. I, my concern is she's just more um, dangerous than. Well, I'm more seeing. dangerous than people think I am, too. You know what? That's great logic. If we're going to go to an auction, I guess we could just go to an auction then. So we don't need to sneak around. No, let's just pretend we're going to buy the bird, and when things go sour, we just fight. Okay. That that sounds like an outline to a DM. (laughs) Like a great day is looking up for Grenda. Excuse me. Stop Uh, talking. I would be a much better host. And you hear the door open up. Who is that? Alastra opens up the door and sees the three of you standing there. Grinda rushes in and goes to the corner. Grinda, you're late. 
Adrena. Birdie. I'm gonna put Some my um, helmet goggles on. I'm gonna. Yeah. Okay. Um, she needs El to make a wisdom saving throw. She got an eight. <laughs> That's a You're fail. able to get. Yeah. Ooh, how long are you in there? Yeah, it's like detect thoughts. Er, it's up to a minute for detect to... thoughts. Yeah. Birdie, as your helmet slams down over your head, your goggles illuminate your mind. You begin to walk around and see the mind of Alastra. In the distance, you also see the mind of Dracenia, Traina, and Samoon as well, though they are farther away. What is the surface level question you ask to be revealed? I'm, I'm looking at Alastra and I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering, I think the biggest question is, is she doing what she's doing out of her free will or? You see that she has freely accepted this assignment, but it is not in her greatest desire of her heart to do so. You also sense intense hatred, nearly blood spilling hatred for Grenda. Do you press forward? Yeah. Okay, you'll have to do that in a second. Okay. Samoon, how do you respond to this? Alastra is the one that opened the door, correct? Indeed. Uh, Alastra! What? What are you doing here? She motions for all of you to enter the room and you're all in this third level of the tower. Dracenia stands before you with hollow eyes, black paint streaking down her cheeks and fresh blood upon her fangs. Her body has elongated. She stands taller, her hair black and crackling with smoke. I, I... I'm here to do some business. A, f a field trip. What are you doing here? Wait, wait, you... You said that you go to work tomorrow and your dad made the field trip joke for tomorrow, so... What, what is this about? Grinda wanted to meet earlier. I'm here for the same reason you are. You told me you were looking for a green swan. Me too. Well, for what reason are you looking for this green swan? Grinda steps forward. Because it's a rare and beautiful commodity, a luxury device in which anyone would be most interested in. And he presents before you a box that begins to shimmer translucently and shows that there is a beautiful, large green swan with a simple tape securing its beak. He says, may I present to you the rare green swan of dreamland. I will now open up the biddings as soon as possible. Can I get 8,000 gold? dare you restrain this beautiful creature's beak? Like I said Restraining before. Restraining it in a crate. Trina's lost it. She's a vegan. <laughs> and, so it is said from the audience, it is a beautiful creature, beautiful beak. Exactly. And it can Release be yours. Release it to me immediately, you swine. This is getting awkward. Uh, he looks around to see if anyone's starting the bidding. Uh, uh, but Elastra, why are you here with her? I'm not here with Dracenia. She's of the bike club. She's working with the Count and no doubt here to get the bidding as well. So, so are you here for your dad or for you? Make a persuasion check, Samoon. I'm going to lean in and she help him. him. Can I lean in? I want to talk to him. I'm just going to whisper in Samoon's ear. I'm going to say, hey, hey, Samoon, if you really flirt and just kind of, you're on the right track, but she really doesn't want to be here. So just try to like, flower her up, like butter her, you know? Oh, I'll leave that up to you, Samoon. You may take advantage if you accept Bertie's advice. Otherwise, if you're... I will take advantage. Okay. Because <laughs> I rolled a four. <laughs> <Ben>. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's much better. Um, that is a straight 18. And it's it was not too long ago that Birdie entered your thoughts. And she whispers these thoughts very uh, discreetly without anyone hearing. You hear Birdie's encouragement to you. I'm going to just instinctively grab her arm gently and kind of just pull her to the side. Elastra, is is this your plan to to do what you want to do? Because we can help you, but I'm just concerned because, well, this does not look very good. And if you get yourself caught up in this, then there's no telling what could happen to your future. Besides working for my father, what future do I have? I have nowhere to go. But, but you have your artwork, and <laughs> you can you can make people happy based off of the, your artwork. You can express yourself through these means. I wish I lived in the same world you did. The world what? that I know is... It's money. Everything has a value. You, me, that creature over there. I'm not going to lie and say that money is not of importance in certain aspects. Grenda speaks up. Money is very important, though. Can we get back to the auction, please? No, 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 no. Money is important in some respects specs but money is not everything i do not need to pay to enjoy the air i breathe or to view the things i see with my eyes and find inspiration and joy from these things come at me for free because of the body that i have to experience them so no i i disagree grinda i think money is not everything i grew up without money and Granted, I, I will admit I might not be the brightest chip off the old block, but but I still know things and I get to experience life and I get to go where I want to go. And I meet nice people along the way like you, Alastra. I met you tonight and we had a really good conversation and you told me all the cool things about how you paint the sunsets in the sky based on what you think they look like on Banzarel and and we got to talk about the color um, music and and how you find inspiration there and how I made a rock kiss and such. At this I point, mean, you, she you grabs have so you. much. <laughs> At this point, she grabs you and kisses you straight on the mouth. And then I just, mm! <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like in Birdie's mind, all she sees is like <laughs> Vaughn kiss Trina. Tree in the head, baby. <laughs> Von has baby. And Samir's just like, oh no! Hello, Sojourners. This is Jonathan. If you enjoyed this background music and ambiance, you should visit Tabletop Audio. You can use them for all your tabletop role-playing needs, while you're working out at the gym, or if you just need something to carry you throughout the day as you accomplish your tasks. Visit them at www.tabletopaudio.com. And so for now, our story continues. Brenda turns around and says, well, isn't that sweet? Uh, and he turns around to look at the swan and you have one chance, Trina. What you got? This whole time that Samoon has been having this heartfelt conversation, I have been seething and coming closer and closer and looming over him and looking very threatening. And I'd like to draw actually my rapier and put it to his throat and be like, give me the swan because unfortunately I've lost my temper seeing this poor restrained animal and I'm not thinking rationally 
Grinda puts up his hand and says, Oh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> like there's all like he like he said, <laughs> things can come for free if we ask nicely and are very pointed in yes. our requests. Sure, and he motions to you to go to the swan, and Dracenia says, Enough of this. And she grabs the swan by oh, the I neck. I was gonna do it first! And she moves to leave. Dracenia. 18 to beat on initiative. She is apprehending the swan, and she takes five points of damage as the swan instinctively pecks her. I want a natural 20, because I was going to grab the swan and Misty step away. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I got a natural 20. I got a natural 20! I did too! Are you serious? <laughs> Triple 20? <laughs> what? <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> the dice have a line. I can you know. Oh, you're a twenty. <laughs> Welcome, Sojourners. This is Jonathan again with Sojourners Awake. You heard right. When I called for initiative, Birdie rolled a natural twenty, and then Traina and Samoon also rolled a natural twenty. We had to take a little bit of a break there for everyone to celebrate and for me to catch my breath and wonder what happens when the entire party rolls a critical success on initiative. So for now, our story continues. Oh my gosh, my brain just fried. <laughs> I don't believe what just happened. Hey, Millville is on our side. <laughs> you know what? That... <laughs> What are the like, odds? I feel like she should just drop dead. And... <laughs> <laughs> Dracenia, the vampire, grabs the swan by the neck. The swan instinctively pecks the neck of Dracenia. Dracenia turns to turn into mist and shadow and fly off once again with her prize. With your rapier in hand, Traina, the swan looks at you and says, I too am from dreamland. The swan then unfurls with this enormous power. His wings spread out as far, knocking Grinda out of the window. You hear him, ah, <laughs> boom, splatter to the ground. Dracenia stops, falls to the ground and says, what is this? And the swan begins to grow and fill in size, breaks through the top of the tower and spreads her wings out to each of you. You may instinctively clamber onto the wing and grapple just like you did with Catrick. Alastra, still hanging onto your hand, Samoon, gets pulled up along with you. And this green swan begins to draw from your energy, Trina, you begin to go into a slumber, a sleep. You feel this fey power beginning to sap you. You collapse upon the feathers near the nape of the neck of this swan, and you go to dream. It's all dark before you, and you are home once again. Home, home. You're looking outside your window at your little house, your little hamlet. This was long before everything happened. Long before you trespassed. Long before the queen discovered. The flowers that walk by your house that morning would look into your home and determine if you were happy or not, or sad, and they would mimic your energy. On your sad days, they would droop their petals down and drag their roots and slump for the rest of the day. And on days you were happy, they would brighten up, lifting each other up and bounce towards the hilltops of dreamland. But unlike those days before, your present mind is back at home. 
and those flowers once again walk by, how do they respond to you? They would look on with a sense of astonishment and wonder as they were expecting. They were, as I was once feeling this intense hatred and anger when I saw a creature, um, not just an innocent animal, but one from my own world in pain and in anguish and lost all of my good senses. And just when I thought I was about to lose it, something happened, something miraculous happened. And even though I feel my energy draining and that frightens me because I don't give of myself and I don't know when it's going to stop taking and I'm used to people just taking and taking from me and not stopping, I still feel the sense of astonishment and wonder and I'm just marveling at how things have turned. A knock comes on your door. I look to the door and answer. The Prince of Ottoman Twilight stands before you. Handsome as he ever is, one of the most handsome in the court of the Fae. He wriggles out his auburn hair and leaves begin to fall all around him. And he sets his jack-o'-lantern pumpkin on the side and bows with his straw hat drooping towards the ground. Well, <laughs> I have you to thank, do I not? Wait, is this... You have some sort of connection with Frisia, I'm assuming. Is it true? Uh, you are with him now? I almost feel that I am with him rather than he with me, yes. <sighs> Is he safe? He's more safe than you could hope. In fact, I dare say nobody else is safe except him. <laughs> That's hard to believe, but I'm very grateful to hear. We're not dreaming, are we? Isn't everything a dream around here? Sometimes a nightmare. He looks over and sees that there's a little bead following him. Someone is looking for you. She yeah. has been. I know. I'm going to curtsy very low and respectfully as I've been trained to. And I'm just going to say, please, if there's anything you can do to take me into your court, I'm ready to leave winter behind. And come to autumn. Anywhere. He looks intently at you, judging your motives. A 26 insight check. He wants to know if you are desperate or if this is a decision of free will. Desperation. Autumn isn't my choice. It's anything but winter. Hmm. I'm looking for refuge anywhere. Then you may make a persuasion check to convince him. But also not just for myself. He holds up a finger. No strings attached. I need a home where I can be safe with my daughter. Ah, progeny. <laughs> Please don't tell anyone. Wait. <laughs> you created in the court of the Queen of Air and Darkness. Technically, I was not in court. When it happened, I was on Bonzarelle. In exile? Oh. Technically. <laughs> I'm starting to become afraid. The flowers oh, no, 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 Don't be afraid. No, please. I'm relishing in your predicament. This is... Very juicy. <laughs> huh. Nevertheless, there's no guile in you, and you are indeed with Frisia, and... He is okay. Milil got to you. Yes. Bring her. Bring her back to Bald Top, where I may see you in person. Okay. Does it have to be Bald Top? Okay, fine. Bald Top's fine. We can go back to Bald Top. I want to see you in person. Of course, sir. I want to see your true form before I take you in. Of course, sir. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> Let's get one thing straight. 
I'm the Prince of Autumn, the Prince of Twilight. I'm not a sir. That is my father. <laughs> Don't mistake me for an old man. His, his youthful appearance flashes all around you and you get the crisp scent of pumpkin pie, apple pie. There are many good things about being in twilight and being in autumn. Not as dreary as winter, but not as happy as spring. It's a wonderful place if you are melancholy and inclined to do so. It's a great place for tragedies and sad stories and uplifting, heart-wrenching tales. He pulls out his sword and says, and daring adventure. Tell me you're still interested. For now, my heart is set on accepting you and your daughter. Uh, I think about what everything you said about the tragic story and the melancholy, and I'm just like, oh, really? But he gets to daring adventure, and I'm like, well, the harvest comes in autumn, and that's always a reason to rejoice, right? It is the best season, is it not? I yeah. will see you soon. All right, wait. Oh. Top. You begin to see him fading. Everything in the in the dreamland world beginning to fade as you start to awake on the back of Frisia. Meanwhile, Trisenya raises up her arms and curses as you leave her on the tower, left behind in Skyworld as an utter failure. Frisia, united by your giving, your generosity, your speech, and your passion towards its freedom. It soars out of Skyworld, beyond Luminous, stretching itself forth, going straight towards Baltop. Without the swan speaking to you, Bertie, you are once again flying on the back of an enormous creature. How do you proceed? Hey, Simu, I really don't know what happened um, or how we got here, but I seem to remember you um, saying you would dance because I didn't get to dance enough at the party. Would you dance with me? I don't, I don't know how we got here either, but, but yeah. Yes, it looks like I can see those color fields coming in front of us. Okay, I'm going to do something now. Guys, don't panic. But, um, and then she calls her gra grandma. Grandma. Grandma, grandma arrives shows up. in spirit form, yes. <laughs> With her guitar. <laughs> she plays like a folk, folky song. And Birdie starts doing like a s square dance. Samoon is going to simply mimic Birdie because he has no idea what he's doing. He's the guy at the party that would be like, you know, doing the weird like <laughs> <laughs> boogie breakdowns, like, you know, the the earwax. If you've seen Hitch, <laughs> <laughs> throw it away, throw it away, <laughs> lawnmower. <laughs> Samoon and Birdie dancing on the back of Frisia as she soars through the darkened sky of Skyworld, luminous ever fading in the background, and Alostra sitting in small form with her hands, holding up her knees, just staring back at the city. Traina, you wake up to quite a sight. I wake up and I sit up and I hear the music and I see Samoon and Birdie dancing and having a good time and I see Alostra there and stunned and I'm just silently weeping um, and at first I want to get up and go dance but then I see Alostra and I want to go sit beside her um, because I heard part of her story when she was talking over with Simone even though I was livid hey it's gonna be okay you know sometimes <laughs> getting out is for the best <laughs> You know, I never would have been brave to do it myself. You know, where we're going, a lot of people go to study and learn and find a new fresh start. And you're supposed to have a book to get in, but, well, and I open up my bag and I pull out the bloody thing. It's like, I don't know what this is, but if they don't have it, this could get you a home there. This is a 
and you read it together with her. I was going, well, before I hand it to her, I hesitate because the mm. reason I grabbed that book was to present it to the Queen of Air and Darkness to show that I was still doing stuff for her while I was away. And I realized that in my moment of just sheer joy and trying to bless somebody else, I'm about to give away something very important to me. But I see the look in her eyes and the hopefulness and I just kind of put on that tight smile like, oh no, I hope this thing with the Prince of Autumn works out and I will, yeah. She senses that and says, I, I, you don't have to give me a, a book to, it's to okay. pay my way. I it's think fine. I have more options than you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, so you would seem. You have two friends. Oh, wait. Three? When did she get here? I said a good night to you. Good night to you and good night, Luminous. <laughs> Grandma is uh, picking away on the guitar. We've got weird friends. It's fine. You also have three friends and grandma. And we'll introduce you to Catrick and Millel. The god? Yeah, I assume he's going to be there. Maybe the Prince of Autumn. He's kind of cute. Although I see that you've got a thing with Simone. I personally <laughs> think that's a good thing. That, no, that was embarrassing. I was caught up <gasps> in the no. moment. Oh, honey. I, I, no, it's, I, I didn't mean all Look, that. Look, he I just... is a great fellow. I, was, I think it would be really nice. You, you see now she has a sword at her side. I was ready to kill and take and I, I was I had I had to muster up a lot of passion and energy just to pull that off. And um, once I realized I wasn't gonna go through with purchasing the swan or killing Drasanya or killing Grenda or killing both. I just <laughs> I don't know, he was also talking a lot. <laughs> Does he do that? Yeah, a little bit. Well, but that's yeah, okay. It, I, I just, hey, I, it seemed like he had made his point, and I couldn't bear for him to just keep unraveling thought after thought. And besides, I was worried that Tresenia might do something, so maybe I have hey. something to contribute after all. You know, if he was going to get kissed by somebody, I bet he's glad it wasn't the vampire. Yeah. That might not have turned out well. Seriously, though, we're going to help you find a place to be and live. And hopefully you dance better than them. <laughs> that I can help with. And actually, she does stand up at that moment and begins to politely dance within the circle of everyone. And I will join her. You dance on throughout the night. Frisia pursues straight through the clouds. You take your turns falling asleep after a long night, achieving your long rest, resting once again on the back of this enormous creature. Trina, your dreams are lighter, more grounded. And as the sun of Bonsarel begins to peek over the eastern sky, the cold winter wind blasts against your skin, Samoon. How do you wake up? Uh... Oh, who opened the window? Not seeing everything. Oh, 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 well, I have missed you too, Winter Air. Though I must say I did enjoy my vacation away. And um, just kind of peeking around, seeing where the rest of them are laying, laying down. You see Birdie yeah. beginning to stir awake. Birdie, you are awake. I see, um... I also see the sunrise, mm. and uh, and I'm gonna just gently go over to Alastra and just kind of start rubbing her on the shoulder to awaken she, her. She wakes up. Uh, she rubs her eyes. Oh, uh, I feel very funny. I. She burps. Mm. Begins to grow a little bit. I. Oh. Oh dear. Oh. I think I think the potion's wearing off. She begins to like write herself along the swan, and then I probably could fit actually oh hello ah good morning alasha i hope you slept well but the sorry, reason not I... good good what good good morning look and then i'm just going to like wait stop talking you are and... you are morning you are morning what well you remember how you told me that you would make the paintings of what 
the sun looked like on Banjarel, but oh. you had never seen it? That was just a, a project, nothing. Well, this is no project. Look, behold the sunrise of Banzarel. And I'm just gonna like sit back and like throw my arm out and let she, her gaze. Yeah, she turns to look and then her mouth drops open. You see the sunlight blast against her cool pale skin. Her eyes glistening and reflecting the blue light. A tear begins to walk itself slowly down her cheek. She points and says, That's what I drew last night. How, how is, what is that? That is the sunrise on a brand new day. A day? What is a day? I guess that makes sense coming from where you come from that you would not know that. But you see on our world, the sun comes up on one side, it crosses over the sky and it goes down on the other. And we call it a day. It's beautiful. And, and so right now the sun is rising on a brand new day for all the people down there on Banzara. And it will cross the sky and lighten the way for all. And then it will tuck away for the night on the other side. And we have lightness and darkness for which we call our days. It's very poetic. She smiles and continues to gaze on. Bertie, you are now awake. Hey guys, that was a really awesome adventure, huh? <laughs> yes. That was a very fun adventure, and we made out with some good coin too to go back to. So I guess we're gonna go back to the library? Yeah, we're gonna meet the Prince of Autumn at the library. He told me so. Oh, okay. Don't for don't forget uh, we have to visit Mr. Crankshaft as well and tell him of our adventures. Oh. I look forward to telling him all about Skyworld. So we have to linger at Bald Top? Oh, okay. We can sure. tell him about the explosion and those helium drinks. That was cool. And then Birdie fought the boar. And it's I mean, just going on and kind of just reminiscing over certain events. Aloster now begins to return to her giant size. She's a small woman, but nevertheless taller than any of you at a 10 foot height. Frisia dips, dips for a minute, but now you can see the Mavi Ocean spread out sparkling before you and the dome over Bald Top within your sight. Having nothing to do but sit and take in the view, Lostra begins to open the book. As she pours through the pages, she looks up and says, What's a rocket ship? And so for now, our story concludes. Every story comes to an ending, so for now we must conclude. Thank you for listening, Sojourners. Your attention will not go unrewarded. And yes, we look forward to continuing this adventure. If you would like to see a mashup episode where the fairy and the free and the bookish and the brave cross paths at Bald Top, then go to your favorite podcasting platform and leave a rating and review. I'm sure some of that luck will find its way to the Sojourners. But no matter how you choose to sojourn with us, as always, may your story continue.